Hello, I am recording a quick video to talk about local messaging, display, uh, uh, numeric displays, uh, alarm messaging it, with HMIs in a Alan Bradley Factory View Talk uh, setup. So I have a simple setup here where I have a double, uh, basically a reverse motor and a forward motor, um, whichever one you want, you want to call it, motor one, motor two, I'm calling motor one forward, motor two reverse. And when th neither are running, motor uh, motor off indicator and light are turning on. I have a basic seal in with a stop and a double an interlock set up so that when one motor is running, the other one can't start on. Plus a an actual mechanical interlock, so say like the thermal overload or something like that. You know, that's an exterior interlock that will keep the motor from kicking on when some trouble condition takes place. Maybe it's a maybe it's a torque sensor or something, something like that. That's what this is supposed to simulate. And then of course an alarm bit so that when an alarm kicks on, it's gonna keep these from running until the alarm has been cleared. Two jump to subroutines, so two JSRs. So one dealing with a motor timer, and one dealing with alarms. Let me go to the motor timer first. Let me zoom this. And basically all I'm doing is tracking whenever the motor is running, it's going to keep track of its time. And I have a timer called seconds, and I'm just dividing by a thousand because remember a timer in Allen Bradley is 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 a uh, millisecond. And so 60 milliseconds, uh, 60,000 milliseconds is equal to 60 seconds. So if I divide by a thousand, I can get a second display. All I'm doing is, is getting a HMI representation of how many seconds, minutes, and, and hours this motor has been running. Uh, so I have a counter. So every when the, the second timer gets up to six, 60,000, that'd be akin to 60 seconds. And it's going to count up one because 60 seconds equals a minute. And the same true for a counter for days, so 24 hours. And then I have a couple conditional things. So when seconds is done, it's going to reset the timer and start over. And if I hit a timer reset button, it's going to do the same. And then I have a move going to the seconds display so that while the timer may reset, the display may not. So this allows the display to reset at the same time this, the, the timer actually does. I do that with my, my minutes and hours as well. And then again, well, and then I have a redundant thing because I forgot I edited it out. And so technically I could delete this. I thought I did delete it. So here we go. Delete out. There we go. Well. Let me just delete, right click, delete rung, right click, delete rung once again and hit accept run. To, that's always a fun of doing things live. There it goes. It's done. But there's my move. All right. I also have an alarm, uh, alarm subroutine that's currently running. Basically, when the motor is off, I'm, I'm moving a one into a, a message single integer. This is what's going to uh, change our value on the HMI to tell us what's going on. Using a message display, you could do this with a multi-state indicator, but the message setup is a little more cleaner and better. So move one if it's motor's off, move two if motor one is on, move two, three if, if motor two is on. And then if I have an interlock trip, I have, I'm moving four into the message thing, and I'm also moving a one into my alarm. I created a different alarm stint to crew move, move a one into that. I also have set up uh, a hour when hours equals 15, move two, because if uh, my motor runs too much and exceeds a life value, and I just made it 15 hours of total runtime, I want the motor to be changed, by golly. And that's what this is gonna signify on my HMI. And then of course, any time when the motor goes greater than or equal to one, so one, two, three to infinity, it's gonna, and, and I put a one shot in there to make sure it just does it once, um, it's going to latch on an alarm bit that I have to physically reset before I go move forward. And that reset's then going to move a zero into the alarm sent to make sure that I don't trigger another alarm once I clear it. Okay. So should be fairly familiar if you've done any Alan Bradley programming, uh, pretty straightforward, but let me show you the HMI. So on the HMI on the main, I have a, a, a simple setup and, um, let me see if, um, let me zoom out. Maybe make it bigger and zoom in so maybe you can see it better. 
and that's a little bit better and you know, i can see things a little bit more so here's my start button stop button you know start reverse this stuff you've seen before if i right click on connections you'll see it's linking both value and indicator back on the status of what is my start to bit um, i have a multi-state indicator a multi-state indicator right here that's just reading the value of if the motor is off or not and so if the motor is off, this is reading on. If it's off, it's reading, you know, you get what's going on. But then here I have a local message display. And how I create a local message display. First things first is, and this is assuming you've already set up your communication path, is under applications, under, uh, well, first I got to highlight things because if I, I got to first highlight my, my window and under objects, under advanced, you will see local message display and this then allows me to draw a local message display in my HMI so if I wanted to delete this out so let me delete this out show you how it starts up from scratch so objects advanced local message display I can add this right there now before I do this and set everything up I need to go down to down to local messages right over here uh, in, in, in my file explorer where it says local messages. And I have to create a local message. And so I already created one. So first when you double click on it and hit new, it's gonna pull up um, this value Notice on my move commands, I had a one, two, three, four. Well, this is what's going to trigger the message. So I can just say one spam or motor running, uh, motor, you know, two, uh, Monty Python. Uh, you can tell my sense of humor, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't matter what I put in there. All the system's going to do is what's ever in the trigger value, it's going to pull this up in that box when it, whatever it reads is a, a single integer, double integer, et cetera. And then when I hit close, it's going to ask you, do you want to save untitled? This is where you give it a name. So I've already done that, and I called it motor control. And this is my messages. Motor off, motor is running forward, motor is running reverse, motor overload strip, corresponding to our values right here. So motor off, motor forward, motor reverse, and you can see the move command when those are true. Okay? So this can give me in my HMI not just a visual representation of what's going on, but also a verbal representation. So I hit close, and if I go into this local, uh, local message, I will go into properties, and then here on message file, right down here, under the general tab, this is where I link up my message file that I'm drawing from. I, I highlight it, highlight motor control, hit OK, and then I have to put a connection in as what value is going to trigger the change. And so here's my tags, and I'm going to go to message sent because that's my message display. Hit apply, everything's hunky dory, and there we go. Now, here, that's the one thing the local message display. Numeric outputs, I know this may be a review, but I can put in a numeric output. I'm going to just move this over here so I can maybe demonstrate how numeric output works. If I go up into objects or I can go um, in numeric display right here, I can put in a, 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 a bunch of values. And if you notice, I can set it so that it only shows a couple different digits. I can fill with zeros. I can fill with decimal points. Um, that's up to your display taste. I can space the zeros. How many decimal points? One, two, three. Since I know these are whole numbers, I can do this. I can do this many. But since what I'm going to do in a second, I'm going to do seven values because I'm going to do the uh, just the uh, the raw timer value just to show off. I can then make sure I connect it. So I'm going to go into tag and I'm going to go into seconds and I'm going to do the accumulated. And so hit apply, and you should notice nothing is showing up. Well, this means if you don't see the N, 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 or whatever have you, you're not going to see anything. 
the these ends are placeholders for the 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 new numbers that you're going to see. So if you don't see the ends, you're not going to see the values in real life. Okay. Um, this is just a timer reset, but here's an alarm reset. Now, you may think, and I will go in and show you the how to do set up alarms that. I can physically clear out alarms with my physical alarm acknowledgement. Um, there's no way of doing that by default because obviously if I'm just clearing the alarm, acknowledging alarm, I should have different steps to then actually go fix the alarm. Does that make sense? And this active alarm reset here button um, will show me, is it gives me another step to reset. Because if you look over here under alarm setup, so right here under alarm setup. Under alarm setup, I have linked my alarm with my alarm sent, which is my which is the value that gets changed if I have an alarm. This works just like local messages that it's already tied up into the alarm menu and it's going to show up over everything when I actually run the process. Now, these values will say when this triggers, do this. So send a value to this PLC. Send a value to this PLC. You know, message this PLC. You know, so that's what this is set up for right here. And I can do it as a value, a bit, least significant bit, depending. So I'm just going to do value. Um, and, and here's where I set up my message. So I can highlight my trigger. All triggers unassigned. So if I have any trigger that shows up, it does something. Um, and it will bring up this message. This is just like how messages work with the trip value and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I can filter out all my alarms. I can also short by messages or trigger. Now under the advanced tab, this is gonna be displayed under alarms, but if I wanted to, I could set up a bit that it reads to reset my alarm from another PLC if I needed to, all right? That's what this is saying. So if there's an active alarm on the HMI, this bit will trip that bit uh, declare that from an exterior source. Okay. So that's what these values are. And so now if I want to see this in real life, you know, I hit save, I can hit test to see if things are reading right. And yes, they are. I'm going to hit this timer reset and see if things reset. Alarms been reset, all that fun stuff. So I hit start motors running forward. You can see it going up really fast and it's not 100%, it's, it's meshing a little bit, but you can see the seven correspond as it goes up. Um, I'm gonna hit stop, I'm gonna reset my timers, and I'm going to stop this because I wanna show you how the alarms work. And the only way I can do that is go up to application and test application. And hopefully it'll allow me to show off. Hit no, here we go. Do I want to consider yes, go ahead. Should have maybe said no. And now here is my HMI as it would appear on the HMI itself. Now it takes a little bit for the communications because I'm doing it over our network. And now you can see how everything works. So let me hit start. And it should start eventually. And there it goes. So now you can see it's running. Status on, motor's running forward. I hit stop, hit reverse. Everything is it's still up, it's still upping its game. And just to hurry things along a little bit, I'm gonna go into the program itself. I'm gonna shrink it down. Whoops. So let me make this bigger. And here's my runtime. You can see it. And now if I go into my motor timer, I am going to go ahead and just show you that it's reading. So now it's at 59. And in literally 15 seconds, it's going to move over to uh, an hour 
but I'm going to trigger the alarm in that way once it goes in the hour. Actually, let me just go ahead and just go 14 just to show you. And now look what happened. It hit its maximum runtime. You see, motor needs to be replaced, exceeded running runtime. Okay. So here I can acknowledge the alarm. I can reset the alarm here. And now if I hit timer reset, I can start again. So yay, that's how we do things. Hoorah. Um, I can trip an interlock but that's way over across the way. You know, if I show you this. You can see that my motor overload tripped. And it says motor overloads have tripped, motor overload is tripped. I acknowledge the alarm, it's still still there. Um, it's still there doing its thing, but I can't start because my motors are still tripped. So this is why you have to be careful with some of the stuff and make sure that You know what you're doing when you're programming. Um, so everything has been reset. I got a bug in my program, so let me hit start, and there it's running again. Um, I'm gonna hit shut down. But that's how you program some of the stuff here. Um, hope it was helpful. I know it was fast, but again, this is what we covered in class last week.